So yesterday was all sunny and beautiful, and today is, well, today's supposed to be sunny and beautiful too, but go with the theme. I am going to go from optimist to pessimist on this morning. Good morning to you. Good Tuesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Steelers. Comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into hockey and or baseball. I also offer daily shots of Penguins and Pirates where you found this. I took almost entirely rosy stances yesterday. I went through the defense first where it's a lot easier and then over to the offense and position by position, in some cases, player by player, said why things could go well right up until I hit a cement wall in mentioning Matt Canada. So today we're going to we'll call this Matt Canada Day because I'm just going to be nothing but negative about everything. And we're going to see how that works for me, because right now your favorite football team is predicted widely and by people putting money down to win 7.5 games this year. And yes, I know you can't win 0.5 without a tie, but there was a tie last year, so let's not pretend it's impossible. 7.5 wins out of 17. That, in and of itself, is pessimism. Because we're talking about a football team that was 9-7-1 and one last year, even though it had a horrific offense and an uncharacteristically leaky run defense. So as I see it, for the Steelers to be worse than 9-7-1, and 7.5 and wins definitely qualifies, they're going to have to be worse at things, not just winning and losing. They're going to have to be worse on offense, probably significantly worse on defense. Is that possible? The pessimist says, of course it's possible. Absolutely it's possible. And I'll start on defense again today, and I will not have trouble with this because I was in Minneapolis and I watched Dalvin Cook and every other purple-wearing person in the stadium run at will over this group. And a lot of the same names are back. No, I would never pin anything like that on Cam Hayward, but Chris Wormley is still around. All the other Band-Aids and tourniquets that were sent out onto the field for the most part are still around. It's nice to have Tyson Alulu back, but he's 35. It's really nice to have Larry Ogunjobi in the fold, but he's got the Liz Frank injury he's coming off of. That is not a slam dunk. This is a very real worry. No act, no posing, no role-playing. It's a real worry. The same goes for the inside linebacker position. We can hope that Devin Bush regains his peak form from what's now three years ago. But the fact of the matter is he missed a big chunk of the 2020 season and was not at all at that level in the 2021 season. And that's the nicest way I can phrase that. So what are we talking about here? This idea that the Steelers have just magically shored up their run defense. There's some question marks at hand. I'm not going to be a weirdo here and start cutting up on TJ Watt or Minka Fitzpatrick. And I'll be honest, I like the corners. I like the corners. I don't know how they'll all work together, and that might be another area of worry. But when I'm talking about the uncertainty Surrounding this defense, I'm talking about up front, defensive line, inside linebackers, which could undo everything else as we saw last season. This portion of Daily Shot of Steelers is brought to you by Point Park University. Choose from nearly 100 career-focused programs leading to bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees. Choose when and how you'd prefer to do that studying whether it's at Point Park's gorgeous downtown Pittsburgh campus, whether it's online, maybe a flexible hybrid format would work best for you. Find out more about all of this at pointpark.edu.
So that's how the defense can be worse. How can the offense be worse? Well, I guess you could just turn around and run backward. I mean, there's always that. Look, I get that it would be very, very challenging for the Steelers to regress from what they were offensively in 2021. But I don't think it's inconceivable. And here's why. Little known stat. Steelers won nine games last year. And of those nine, seven of them involved fourth quarter comebacks. You know who engineered those comebacks? Yeah. And you know who out of the four quarterbacks that will be showing up in Latrobe has that same pedigree? Yeah. And that's not something to just lightly dismiss. Because having that trait, having that intangible to you as a quarterback is something that's valued by coordinators, by head coaches for a reason. It's something that they can't instruct. It's something that they can't instill. They can't make you be a tough guy with ice going through your veins. They can't make you the way Ben Roethlisberger did, relish those situations. Ben lived for that stuff. You talk to his teammates, they'll tell you they'd see his eyes get wide and he'd start chattering to them, challenging them in a way that wouldn't occur in other situations. He he was there for that, and the Steelers could count on that. And the Steelers did count on that and got most of their wins, almost all of them, that way. I'm not here to bury the wide receivers all over again. There's some potential there. There are some inconsistencies. I'm not here to judge the offensive line. I'd like to think it'll be better than what it was last year, given the gazillion dollars that they spent on adding James Daniels, Mason Cole, and keeping Chooks Okorafor, but I don't know that. I can't trust either of the left guards, Kevin Dotson or Kendrick Green. We're still learning about Dan Moore at left tackle. Pat Fryermuth looked wonderful at times. Was anybody else bugged by the really, really untimely mistakes? Like at the worst possible times? Najee Harris has pretty much everything going on for him, but he also logged 90% of the offensive snaps last year. He can't do that in year two. And there's no backup yet in the fold that you would want to have even more than 1% of those snaps. But enough deflection and distraction here because we're really talking about two things when we talk about doubting the offense. One is quarterback, just because we don't know. At the moment, we don't even know who. And two is Canada, because the next good thing that we see from him in an NFL circumstance will be the first. That's quite the strike against somebody. When we come back, J1Q. This portion of Daily Shot of Steelers is brought to you by our friends at Mike's Beer Bar. They're located directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. They are the one, the only, the premier destination in Pittsburgh for craft beer. More than 500 craft beers available, more than 350 of those local, and more than 80 of those on tap. Mike's can't be topped. Not for beer, not for the awesome kitchen and menu that's available, not for all the special events that are going on there. Check them out online at mikesbeerbar.com. Mike's Beer Bar, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. And today's J1Q comes from J.R. Waddell, who says, DK, you seem to have great vitriol for Matt Canada's offense. I'm bewildered because it's my contention that we haven't seen it yet. My understanding of the Canada offense is that the quarterback is predominantly under center. The pocket can be rolled right or left. The quarterback is capable of booting out the backside of the formation to either run or throw. Motion is used liberally. The middle of the field is exploited. The quarterback can create with his legs, picking up first downs when nothing else is there. And if this is an accurate summation 
of the core principles of the Canada offense, how can we, but most especially you, be anything but optimistic that this year's offense will be materially improved? JR is a long question, man. <laughs> you didn't come close to selling me on anything. You know why? Because I didn't see it with my own eyes. A good coach. I'm not talking about a head coach, a coordinator, a positional coach. I'm talking about coach, lowercase c, at any level of organized sport, adjusts to the athletes at hand. And those of you who coach or have ever coached probably finished that sentence lip syncing right along with me. You adjust to the athletes at hand. You don't try to make them into something that works with your system or your offense or your defense. You work with them. You work with the cake ingredients that have been presented to you on the countertop. That's it. That's all you got. If you want to make strawberry shortcake and there are no strawberries on that table, you got to make another kind of cake. You know, like British baking show stuff. Canada showed me in 2021, beyond any personal doubt, that he lacks not only the experience to be an NFL offensive coordinator, but also the ingenuity, the imagination. Those were the terms that I used repeatedly throughout the season. And it never changed. If anything, he became more static, more fearful of trying anything new. You want to blame that on Ben? Go nuts. Neither of us is going to win that argument. Neither of us is inside number seven's helmet. But I'll come back by repeating that number seven came back in seven of those nine victories. And I can promise you that if you feel that Ben was somehow the problem, and yet Ben was the one able to pull off those rallies, then what was Canada? What did he contribute? Like, at all? Look, the optimism-pessimism thing is, is, is fun for a couple of episodes. But you make it sound here, and I'm retorting here gently, you make it sound as if we should all be required to be optimistic about the Canada offense just because he didn't have his players. And my very simple response is, why? Why? What have we seen? What have we seen from Canada in the NFL that would make us say, hey, we really need to get this guy his kind of players? Why? Who's he? What's he done? Maybe he'll do it in 2022, maybe that's legitimate cause for optimism. To me, it feels like blind hope. I, 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 look, I'd love to be wrong. And, and those of you who've been listening to me or, or reading me for any amount of time know that whenever I am wrong, I'll be the first one to stand front and center and say, hey, Matt Canada sure showed me. But right now, Right now, I got nothing. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Steelers, and we'll do another one of these tomorrow. 